and welcome to Movie Mandates. I'm Kelly. And I'm Andrew. And this is the show where my brother and I force each other to watch a movie based on a specific monthly theme. It's October and we're talking about what creeped us out as a kid. And on our previous episode, we got to watch The Secret of Nim because that's what my brother picked. But this time we are watching or talking about my movie that we watched, Return to Oz. However, before we talk about that, it is only fair, since I picked the movie, that brother gets to challenge me in our little segment called Trivial Trivia. All right. So <clears throat> one of my, I, I'm a big horror hound. I, I love me my horror movies. and I'm partic- I would never have known that about you. Really? I, I'm particularly partial to the slasher genre. Yeah. And um, some of my favorites uh, and, and even as as a young kid, uh, there was very little that mom would not let us watch. So I got to right. watch all the greats uh, when I grew up as a very young child in the 80s. Yeah. So um, what I would like you to do is name five slashers, either the name of the slasher or the franchise that they're in, from the 80s. Now, a, a, a <laughs> couple a couple ground rules. Um, in order to qualify as a slasher, they have to, <clears throat> the series has to be at least three movies long. So an original and two sequels. Okay. Minimum, okay? Uh, one of the movies in the franchise has to have actually released in the 80s. Okay. okay? And the slasher itself doesn't have to be human, but it does have to have intention behind its kills it has to want to kill rather than for example the alien franchise uh, alien came out in 79 but its sequel aliens came right. out in the 80s sometime i wouldn't consider that a slasher because the xenomorphs aren't out to kill you they're just biologically driven they're part of their life cycle like is jaws yeah, I wouldn't. Uh, you might be able to make an argument for the shark in part four, but uh, also also a movie that came out in 1975, I think, and I think all three sequels came out in the 80s. Yeah, actually, Jaws two may have still been 70s, but could have been Jaws two. I think came quicker yeah, than the other two, but that's yeah, at okay. least three three and four were in the, were in the 80s, and it's just a shark eating. That's a, those are animal attack movies. Yes. So yes. there you go. Name me five slashers I, from the. 80s. I think I understand the excite excitement. I understand the assignment, and I'm so excited to do the assignment. Child's play. Child's play, Chucky. Sure, he I really think the first one I think was 1988. Oh, I was gonna say, oh, I thought it was 89, but you are you are much uh, probably... possibly, but uh, I, I do have IMDb up in front of me. Skin just of our in... teeth. I knew that it was gonna. Be, I knew that it was in the 80s because that was my. Um, um, uh 88 movie. 88 yeah that was my slash happy halloween because i uh, it was yeah i think that was the play. second the, the second one we did so so good so good yeah probably the longest one we did too because we yeah. could just talk actually about the only forever. entry in the series that came out in the 80s because the sequel i think was 90 or 91 uh, so you had... did they have one in the early aughts like did 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 bride of chucky or chucky uh bride of chucky i think was 98 seed of chucky i think was early aughts like around 2003 or four or something like that crazy crazy so child's play is one mm-hmm. um i know halloween was in the 80s many of the most of the sequels were the original halloween i think was 1978 but uh, and i i think two was like 1980 and several of the sequels were in uh the 80s so yes that that definitely counts okay and then um i just i said halloween right okay mm-hmm. and the slasher's name is michael myers michael myers yeah <laughs> so i was like i'm I like sorry ta- do you I Do think you not know that? No, 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 no. I did just, just, just for bonus points, and for some, I think we've talked about this before. But for some reason, uh, in the credits, at least in the first film, the body my, or the shape, the shape, the, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. no one ever calls him that, and it, and it's not like he wasn't named until the second movie. He's Michael Myers throughout That's the movie. The thing. I have no he idea what the hell they call the shape specifically, Michael Myers. Like it's not like who is this. 
person that is killing people. Like it's. I mean, I, I don't know. It's, the weird. Answer. It, it's like if they credited Cujo as the dog. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's like specifically Cujo. Um, anyway, that's two. Jason was from the eighties, right? He Jason started who? Voorhees. Yes, or at least maybe his mother was in the eighties. Yeah, Friday the Thirteenth, I believe, was nineteen eighty. Uh, most of the sequels were in the eighties, so yeah, that that definitely counts. Friday the Thirteenth, Jason Voorhees. Now, when was Leprechaun? Was um, that ni- early nineties? Leprechaun, I'm pretty sure is 90s. I, I, I'm I'm okay. thinking probably like 92. Let, let me look. Okay. Uh, 93. Golly. So so that that that, that was 90s. No counting. Okay. I believe Friday's 90s too. He didn't start in the 80s. Mr. Nightmare on Elm Street. That was uh, 90s. No, that that 1984 is uh, that, the original what? Nightmare on Elm Street. That was yeah. 84. I was yeah. I was baby. I was, was three a, years old. That was, a, that was a good year. That was, that was uh, Ghostbusters. I think the Indiana Jones scene. I think Temple of Doom was that year. I think Gremlins was that year. That was a hell of a year for film. But yeah. Holy uh, The original Nightmare on Elm Street was 1984. You know what? I, I could have chosen, um, and I didn't think about it until a couple days ago after I actually watched uh, Return to Oz. Mm-hmm. Uh, Temple of Doom creeped me out as a kid yeah yeah um <laughs> and i was like oh that that was a real that was a real thing that, that it was a, a reaching yeah you know, there's a lot of things specifically i think it was the reaching into the dude's chest and yanking out his heart and he's still yeah. alive that's that, one, that was just so weird and then in the golden child with the rice and there's like blood and blood the in it yeah he's like scrapes the top off the bowl huh, of porridge huh. and there, there's blood in it yeah that that for some reason really squicked me out when i was young too I don't like, that's I don't not like a it, horror like movie it. No, no, I'm sorry. I was just all of a sudden we got on the yeah, Indiana yeah, Jones, yeah. No, no, and so no, I got no. to creeping out. And okay, I yeah. still have one more to do because mm-hmm, Leprechaun did four. not make the yep. cut. Yep, that was '90s. Dang. Slasher, definitely, but that, oh, that, I... that was '90s. Okay, who else is slashing people? Like, there's so many one-off slashers. Mm-hmm. Um, who else is is? You've is... got Freddy, Jason, and Michael. Those those are the big ones from the '80s. And I didn't even think Fred, Freddy was in. 80s i was like oh he was because like he's so visceral to like my like mm-hmm. but in the 90s i think i was when we were watching them like canon well yeah, yeah um amazing. oh nope that's yeah not i the think 80s. i think all six of it of the the original you know from nightmare on Elm street to freddy's dead i think we're on the 80s i think freddy's dead was 89 let me look who else uh, oh no, Fred, Freddy's Dead was ninety one. Okay. Oh, so, so it was early. Were 90s. there? What about the um? That's New Nightmare. I think it was like ninety four. Isn't there? Well, here's a query. So the Texas Chainsaw Massacre is a slasher film, 70s. and there's a lot of remakes. Yeah. So could it be considered a franchise? Uh, yes, it, it definitely would. 74. So, the so uh, yes, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre would count because the sequel, the first sequel, came out in the 80s. Leatherface, right? Yep. Leatherface? Yeah, yeah. The original uh, Toei Hooper, I think, was 1974. Uh, I don't remember what year, but the, the sequel was definitely in the 80s. The third one was, I think, it was early 90s and oh what about this guy pinhead yeah yeah yep the original hellraiser was is that the one with the dibic box the uh the lame the lament configuration yeah the, the puzzle box yeah. yeah 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 what did i call it something else i thought you said divot box and i'm like what i thought i don't know the little boxy box that goes uh 1987 so yeah the first hellraiser was 87 pinhead so yep. yes yeah, he likes to screw people up too. Sure. <laughs> I also enjoy like thank you for those who just listen as I'm like poking at my head and brother had to go open head. Yeah, hey, you know the guy with the the thing, uh, the things all over his face. Um that's that's five. It's actually six. So oh, you're, you're oh, good. I mean, if you want to keep going, there there there's plenty. I feel like there's what's wait 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 
I know mm-hmm. what I'm thinking of. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's still Hellraiser. Yeah, it's, the big ones. But the one that has the metal ball that has like a blade at the front and Phantasm. the guy <laughs> with the white hair. That's yeah, Phantasm? I th- that's fan. Would I? Ooh, that is. Um... It's definitely horror. I. I I don't know if I would consider that a slasher. That's right. Um, I got five. <laughs> I was just really excited to finally. Yeah, for the when original, you get five, yeah, your okay. brain clears, and then yeah, things the, can the, start the original Phantasm in. was seventy nine. It didn't have a sequel until eighty eight. Um, and that's a long hiatus. Yeah, it's. I don't know how I would. Those movies are so weird. I'm not sure how I would classify those. Mm-hmm. Um they're not really slasher films uh definitely horror but not really slasher films but uh the the anger scrims uh tall man i th- i think is how that character is credited is definitely a horror icon so yeah uh, that's and the second the second movie at least was uh was the 80s so yeah i'd, I'd count that i actually did not ha- i i wrote a bunch down uh, down and um that wasn't on there. Uh, I actually didn't even consider it because it doesn't it doesn't actually jump out at me as a slasher film. But um, one thing I was trying to figure out is if the uh, Slumber Party Massacre franchise and the Sorority House Massacre franchise count as the same franchise because Sorority House Massacre is takes place in the same universe and is kind of a spinoff. That's right. I'm... Actually, what? the the movies end up like borrowing a lot of footage from the previous movies to pad out their runtime that's genius <laughs> what is the one the christmas one the... silent night deadly night yeah there's actually several but from the 80s i would say silent night deadly night but that doesn't ha- that had no black christmas is the one that got remade black christmas I... was a bob clark movie from my th- oh god i think that's 70s like 76 77 okay. somewhere around there it did get remade in the 2006 Teens, or something aughts, i don't know but yeah okay so it it wasn't something that just kept oh it actually got remade twice uh, 1974 was the original one uh oh 2006 i, I was right that, that was the remake <laughs> and then they had another one with imogen poots in oh. 2019 uh Can which i just love that name imogen it, it's a it's a fun name poots um excuse me i pootsed um i i loved what black christmas 2019 was going for but i i think it was honestly hamstrung by its pg-13 rating Mm. not like i need gore i like gore i don't need it but there were a few moments in the in the film where i was like is she dead what happened? I, I could actually tell what happened because it's PG-13 and they had to cut away. Uh, I think she's dead. Pretty sure she's dead. The eyes just go big. She's like, uh, and you're like, well, she yeah, I'm go, like, did she get what just happened? <laughs> garage? I really don't know. What is it? Who yeah. is it? It's fun. I love horror films. I yeah. really do. I'm happy. Um, This is all true. And now we get to talk about Return to Oz. I was so uh when Woo! editing the previous episode on um the other uh, day. Secret of Nim, yeah. Oh. Um I thought you were going to tell me the day and I'm like I don't yeah, need to know. We was... were we were talking about we, at the end of the show we were talking about this movie and yes. um we were talking about the the evil queen with who with the interchangeable heads. The multiple heads. And then I immediately said first of all, right? And it sounds like I'm talking about she plays the the no evil, she no does no no not. I was she just plays the... jump she plays Dorothy I was just jumping around yeah. so we know that Frieza Bulk plays Dorothy I was just I was like had a new thought and just immediately went to it but I was with you on it I know yeah, I Kelly like, Kelly Kelly can I, follow this <laughs> I was like I knew where you yeah yes it is um and I'm not editing in a footnote so forget so I thought yeah. I'd mention that here. So just watch all of the episodes and we will continually put in our, you know, yeah. for the next time. I was surprised by how much of this movie I actually remembered. I'm interested in, okay, so let's, let's, okay, so I saw this movie, I, I'm pretty sure that this is the second time I've seen this movie. A. 
the first time I saw it obviously had uh I had a reaction to it like a visceral reaction of like no thank you right um mm-hmm. the wheelers and the woman with the um cuz going into this all I really remembered was the yellow brick road is broken mhm um there are characters called the wheelers and the thing is it's funny I only remember the masks. I forgot that they were just punk kids. Like, well, you know. The very first introduction, they've got some really creepy ass masks. Yeah, and they're on the top of their heads, like when they're looking Mm -hmm. down and then they look up. Like the mask. And so the masks are quote unquote always there, but they're not really highlighted. I think you see them twice, maybe because there's another time at the end that you see them when they're all getting. Um, but I think that's it. But it, th- the funny thing is, is that that's what I remembered was the mask. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, the woman who changes heads. So these are the three things I remember. I had z- like every now and then things would come back. I was like, oh, I kind of remember this tinker toy guy that you'd have to mm-hmm. wind up. OK, that's so as I was watching, there were a few things that I was like, OK, I have a vague recollection. And and one of the biggest vague recollections that comes to me is I remember when I watched this movie. So, uh, 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 spoiler words, not spoiler alert is not the word. It is just putting everything out on the table. I don't like the Wizard of Oz, so I'm just going to put that out there. I don't is, dislike the Wizard of Oz, but I've never liked the Wizard of Oz. I, I've always been like, eh. You want to talk <laughs> about another movie that creeps me out? And the only reason, and I will be very specific about this, and I will also let you all know that I, or both of you, know <laughs> that the reason that The Wizard of Oz freaks me out is because of all the lore surrounding it. Now, like with the suicides. Oh, you mean out with the production all, of the film? Okay. Yes. All of the um, it, the fact that the Wicked Witch of the West set herself on fire, like for real and all this. So like all the urban legend stuff and the real stuff just gets mixed in my head. And I do know what did happen. I know that, you know, but at the same I time, <laughs> I have convinced myself like that there is a munchkin hanging from a tree in the background and they just superimposed a crane on it. It wasn't the fact that they went, oh, look, we cleaned up the footage. Yeah, you cleaned up the footage. You put a freaking crane in the frame where there was a little dead munchkin. Like, so these are things that go through my head. So putting it out there, I'm not a fan. But we're going to have to talk about the first movie because this is what I distinctly remember when entering into Return to Oz is it is a sequel but it is not a sequel to the movie. Because it borrows some elements from the MGM film, but uh, like the Ruby Slippers. But yeah, it, it's an adaptation of the book sequels. Exactly. But that's the problem. And I kind of remember that now, like watching it. I was like, oh, yeah, I also remember because not only did it creep me out, but I didn't like it. And to be clear, it is in the top five worst movies I've ever seen now. I despite I would have rather sat through every movie we've watched thus far again than ever put that steaming pile of garbage back on my television. I hated it. Return to Oz or yes. Wizard of Oz? Return to Oz. Oh, okay. I wasn't so sure just which putting one that talking. out there. Okay. So not all right. Didn't like the movie. I have yet to think of something good. Actually, no, there's one good thing I like about it one and it's so minute but anyways so that was my problem because you have dorothy Mm -hmm. six months after she gets from oz but she's younger (laughs) yeah and time has traveled back to the 1800s by the way six months later she switched from like 17 to 10 yeah and they went back in time oh i don't know 50 years 60 years so I remember. Yeah, as it's a kid. turn of the century, so it, it it's like yeah. it's like fall of eighteen ninety nine in this movie. Yeah, and they mention it. They mention that you know the new century is. Mm-hmm. So um, so yeah, I it's off putting for anyone who is a Wizard of Oz fan because they didn't make the first book. Now 
this is where I'm going to get into it. I have not read. I've read Wicked, but that has nothing to do with yeah, it. Yeah, uh, this, so this I movie, not... my understanding is, did not right. perform very well. And I think a lot of it is because everyone assumed it was a sequel to The, the, first the Wizard of Oz. The the mo- one of the most famous movies ever made. Uh-huh. Like, truly. So you don't make the second one before I mean, 40 you... 40 years later. Try but... <laughs> to re- but, like, you don't do that unless you try to revisit Oz. Like, that's the thing, is... None of the characters I mean, they are the called same. it like, Return to Oz, which I don't know if that's actually a type. I'm trying to remember. They actually, according to the film's credits, it's an adaptation of, I of think, two. books two and three, which yes, is Esma of Oz and something else. And I don't think either of them are actually Return to Oz. I mean, it's like you called it Return to Oz. I didn't actually watch the trailers, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was marketed pretty heavily on like, hey, remember oh, Wizard sure. of Oz? Here's the next installment. You know, oh, sure. The ruby and slippers think, are back. And I think that a lot of people did. And I think that me being so yeah. crazily and analytically also, again, minded, I was like, I'm out. I mean, this is a child. Mm-hmm. Me now, it just bugs the crap out of me. But like, you can't tell me that it's been six months since Oz and she's, you know, de-aged. <laughs> but anyways, I don't think that they ever made it. Cl- like, I just I just think that you shouldn't start with a sequel if the original was never actually made. Like, okay, A New Hope, you did just fine. But like, that was... Well, I mean, it was originally just Star Wars. You know, <laughs> the, the whole chapter four... Uh... A New Hope was, or and episode sure, they, four, a new, that was later, but. Okay, so they made Lord of the Rings before they made The Hobbit, but at the same time. So did Tolkien. <laughs> Actually, wait, which one? The I'm Pretty sure The Hobbit, he wrote The Hobbit l- later. I, I do not know the up. answer to this. I hope you're right, because I laughed. Um, ooh, the Let fireflies me... are out. Let me entertain you. Are you looking it up right now? Uh huh. I'm gonna drink some coffee because it is nighttime and I love it. Ah. What are you typing in? <laughs> uh, let, let's see. Uh, so okay, so it's 1937 uh, when he wrote. Uh, Lord of the Rings. Okay. Let's see. When was the the Hobbit? Yeah, I have something in my mouth. It's probably hair. No, no. It looks I like the Hobbit. Always have hair in my mouth. Thirty-seven. So. Yeah. Okay, so the Hobbit came. What was nineteen thirty-seven? And Lord of the Rings was. Um, Later, 40. okay, that was the fifties. Okay, so Great. all right, no, the Hobbit came first. I was wrong. Either way, it's still a complete story, The Lord of the Rings. Whereas this one, yes, you, I feel like, again, because so let's talk about the movie and some of the plot points and all the things that I didn't like and the one thing that I found interesting, okay. to say the least. It has been six months since Dorothy has come back from Oz. And it's not the Oz we know who have not read the books. Now, is that bad of me? Possibly. I don't care. Um, it's, it it's not. For you. It's, fine. it's just not on my, you know, it's not my next to read. In fact, the next one I'm reading is Animal Farm. I just got it the other day. Mm. And I'm about to open it. Very excited. Never read it. Um, but it's uh, the next one. So I don't think I've read it either. She comes back from Oz and she is terrorized almost. She has PTSD before anyone knows what PTSD is like. And the thing is, is that I found interesting. I was like, you know, that that could very well be like she just she was in a tornado. She got swooped into this random land where witch is trying to kill her and you know, there's ruby slippers and there's magic and then there's a lion and then there's a tin man. Like, and in, and, in, and in this world, the tin man is a man who chopped off his arms and legs and head and tin things grew in their place. Did you hear her tell the therapist this? And I was yeah. like, mm-hmm. I was like, 
I was like, wait, wait, what Oz were you it's, in? It's a little, it's a little darker. Origins Which, for the Tin Man, yeah. I'm pretty okay. sure that's from the book. And that's the, th and that's where it, that is exactly where it hit me is that I was like, this is because I know from lore that the books are completely different and darker. Like they have, like there's a. I mean, but then you think of like Grimm and darker his fairy tales in way, stuff. yeah, yeah, more more fairy tale dark. I mean, kind of like this movie. I, I I think my understanding of the books, uh, which I've not read, is the the, the mo this movie's tone is a lot closer to the books than the original MGM film was. Right, right, correct. Which that was just about candy. Um, it was saccharine. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. So, um, so yes. So she. I mean, goes, they do have that Oreo song, so you're not far off. Oh, oh, oh! No oh, Oreo, no. no. Oreo, oh, oh <laughs> Oreo. God damn! What an idiot! Um, Visco loves this movie. <laughs> they're like, hey, I don't they're know. They're like, Nabisco's yes. Around. I think Nabisco is Oreo. That's something else I'd have to look. Hydrox is like, what? No, 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 they wouldn't be. Hi, drops. Those no, are gross. They're so gross. They're, they're, they're so they're, gross. They're, they're, most most How uh, do most you generic screw up brand. A most generic brands are like nigh indistinguishable, but Hydrox cookies are freaking gross. It's I terrible. Know, I don't it's know terrible. what they did. So we put our own stamp on it. What? Uh, yeah. Not that stamp. <laughs> Wrong stamp. Wrong stamp. Wrong. Yeah. So she goes. So Aunt M and oh, and then it also talks. I have to. It's Piper my ear. Laurie. <laughs> I didn't even notice. Yeah, it's Piper Laurie is Aunt M. I, I like, knew oh, it hey. was someone, but I was like, I, who is that? That's mm -hmm. so funny. It's Carrie's mom. Um. So yes, I also so the 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 conceit of like, there six months later she's a wreck, and I was like, that's interesting. And the farm, like they lost their home. They lost yeah, their a whole bunch of livelihood. There was a tornado. And you don't think about like the the the, the post-trauma of just what happened on the farm. Like, who knows if if like just it's traumatic. And I thought that that was an interesting play because it's something that when you are watching it, the first watching, because I can only have reference to the first one. Um, at the end when she's like, and you were there and you were there, everyone still seems happy and she's in a bed. So they don't even talk about the fact that like, by the way, we've completely leveled yeah, yeah, Kansas. We, 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 we Not dug that your Kansas own... wasn't completely oh. leveled. In the first oh my place. God, Kansas, it's completely flat. Oh, wait, it was in the first place. No, we, we dug your unconscious ass out of the rubble of our house and you've been you know comatose for three days you finally woke up yay yeah it's you know? it's yeah uh, so my reading of uh, i don't know how the books portray it by but my reading of both these movies is oz is not real uh no. oz is dorothy's way of coping with a yes. traumatic experience yes. agreed and i think i, I mean if you want to you know if you want to feel that uh, you know Oz is is real, perfectly fine. Read, but I feel that's actually the text. <laughs> you know, um, no, I, I would agree no with one you. else sees this. She has no. It's not like the ruby slippers show. You know, she's always like, "I lost the ruby slippers on the way back," or the key. You know, she never has any evidence. Um, aspects of her life are always incorporated into the mm -hmm. land of Oz. My textual read is Oz is not real. It's her way of coping with trauma in yes. both movies. I would agree with that for this one, 100%. The first one, I would also agree with. I just don't think that they made it as, because they didn't make it dark, you're just kind of like, and again, I'm only talking about the movie, which took a lot of liberties, blah, 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 blah. But like the the first movie, I don't think tried to go deep. Whereas this movie, at least, no. you know, they truly were to, like she has and and it and I agree. I think Oz is just her coping mechanism. I think Oz is just uh 
something that she needs to work through. I get it. So. And uh, the the chicken, Belinda or whatever her name was, got to yeah. stay in Oz. When in reality, Aunt Man or Aunt May, uh, Aunt Em and uh, Uncle Henry ate her because she wasn't laying eggs. Correct. This is also correct. But in, that's, in, I'm sorry, that uh, that's no. dark, but that's my read. <laughs> but that's what happened. Because yeah. <laughs> she even said it. She says that if you don't start laying eggs, they're going to make you into dinner. And then so she lost her animal and she yep. just has to be like, nope, the animal's in Oz. Anyhow. Animal, and she, she just stayed in Oz. She's fine. So, oh, by the way, did you recognize the voice of uh, Belinda or Bulimia or whatever the chicken's <laughs> name was? Bulimia. Oh, my ear itches. Um, Yes. Although I did not read the credits, so I didn't. I didn't rec- I I did and I didn't recognize the name. I had to look them up. Uh the the dude who does the the voice is a voice actor who's done a bunch of stuff, but uh you would know him as the voice of wait, the Wait, John- wait, 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 wait. Is he in Labyrinth? Yes. Does he go come inside for a cup of tea? Yes, the junk lady in Labyrinth. Come it's like I knew I I it's like I know I recognize this voice somewhere and I had to the look m- I didn't recognize the, the actor's name, but uh, yep, the junk lady oh. from the Labyrinth. I just threw my mouse across the room. Whoops. One moment. Sure. That's what happens when you gesticulate wildly, is you throw a mice across the room. Um, that's awesome. This makes me so happy. Because yeah, I, I, I recognized it. Um... But I also feel like I recognize the woman with the heads as well. Like things That's, were recognizable to me. Yes, but I that didn't is um, around uh, d- 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 something Marsh, Jean Marsh, Joan Marsh. Uh, she she plays um, um, uh, Bav Morda, you know, the evil queen in uh, Willow. Okay, so yeah, but mo- most of the folks in this movie are television actors. Because I, I, I was like, because a bunch of people, I'm like, I've seen them somewhere before, and I looked up at it. They're all TV actors and stuff. Yeah, so you, it all seen was. Them so she being Dorothy, mm-hmm. uh, Miss Miss Gale, who's about ten years old in 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 part two. <laughs> um, it doesn't matter, Kelly. We're moving on from that. She's having some issues. She's going through. She's going through it, and so Auntie M wants to take her. <laughs> right to like a psychiatrist who basically wants to give her uh electric talk uh, electric that's that's what she wants is that <laughs> electroshock therapy don't even i can't um electroshock electric yeah i i would have a i would therapy. have a ton of fun with that slip of the tongue if the actor were older in this role this is also true so the point is is she gets away because nah and a heavy rainstorm instead heavy of a rain tornado. Heavy rainstorm. Uh, she she slips away and finds her way into Oz, and boom, she's back in Oz. And basically, her whole thing is to make the Scarecrow the king of Oz again. And which apparently is something that happened. Which is exactly which is apparently something that happened. And apparently, there's this desert uh, that surrounds Oz. That if you touch the sand, you turn to sand immediately. Yeah, uh, desert of the deadly death, desert, desert, deadly something. desert. Yeah, right. Something um, like that. That was an element of the film that I had compl- that I had to re-remember once it was introduced. It's like one of the wheelers falls into the sand and turns into sand and just breaks apart. Oh yeah. my god, I remember that now. The other thing is the the moose headed couch. It was another thing I'd completely totally forgotten forgot about. Totally forgot about that. Uh, it, that completely happened out. Completely One thing out. that I felt was really interesting is, um, I was really proud of myself for text for as a six year old or something, uh, accurate textual read of a film because I had always understood that the yellow brick road was broken to shit because the wheelers and are were skating on it all the time and just screwing up the road that's never explicitly stated in the movie while watching it last night i was thinking that's probably something they outright state oh you know she brought in the wheelers and they go they destroyed the yellow brick road no that's something you just kind of have to imply 
And I wonder yeah. if it's something that I implied as a little kid or someone else told me, but... I don't uh, know, because I I feel like they're ruining it, but I also feel like a lot of it can be, like, symbolic <laughs> as well. Like, you know, the path that you think you're on is breaking, blah, 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 blah. There could I'm, be a lot of I'm things. Glad, I'm glad when the, 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 the stoned citizens of uh, the Emerald City were restored that the, uh, the, the headless statues were restored with heads. Yes, did, yes, did yes, just... yes. Lob headless Although, on I will that, would say, that would have been darkly hilarious, but also really horrifying. When Dorothy is going through the Emerald City and she finds that everyone's been turned to stone because of the like the troll king or the goblin the gnome monster king. that's right, the gnome king. Who Although I, I think in the credits it's written with an N, not a G, just N O M E king. If I remember, I'm like, did what do you not know what a gnome is? Or were you trying to say that he's something else? Although, maybe that's just how it's spelled in the book because the book was for kids and Frank Baum, L. Frank Baum was like, uh, kids won't yeah, be, L. Frank. Kids will keep calling it Gnome if I spell it like that. It's a fantasy creature. Who cares? So that's interesting. I I could get behind that reasoning. Um, Maybe, maybe slightly this could be possibly the second thing that I minutely thought was interesting about this movie. Is the Gnome King or the Gnome King because he's no G? Um, is how he became a real because he was just a face on a wall mm -hmm. and then he kind of got more rocks as he collected the souls, I don't know if you want to say souls. Of? Yeah, that's I was like, do you want to call them souls? Do you trapped, want to call them just tra trapped uh members of Dorothy's entourage into little right he becomes, and paraphernalia and it's, in his collection. He becomes more concrete, I guess, more yeah. distinct. More, yeah, like more uh, uh actually there, his yeah, presence. Like, like, you, you know how if life, you stare at of. the clouds, you can see shapes in the clouds, or if you look at the popcorn texture on a ceiling, you see shapes in there. Imagine staring at a craggy rock wall and seeing a face. That impression of a face is kind of how the Gnome King first presents himself. And as he steals members of Dorothy's party, he becomes yeah. more and more defined until he's an actor in makeup instead of some really cool uh, claymation stop motion, yeah. stop motion effects with clay. And then as <laughs> Dorothy... Um, as Dorothy releases her friends, he regresses Reverts, back yeah. into yeah. So I I found that interesting. So, mm -hmm. um, so let's talk about the things that I didn't like and why. And no I'm joking, but like um, let's talk about the Wheelers real quick because okay. this probably uh encapsulates how that many of those actors fell and broke their asses. <laughs> dude for real though <laughs> this might encapsulate what it is that i found one of the biggest things i found wrong with the movie okay first off i am appalled at myself for ever thinking that the wheelers were were scary the masks yes but these punk like it it has nothing to do with their hair color you know what it has to do is with the lighting i don't think they had any gaffers on set because this it outside movie harsh lighting was just Hey, there's a field. Let's call it Oz. Hey, here's a sand pit that my kid plays in. Get the cat poop out. Let's call this deadly. Everything was, it was just outside. Shadows were hard when they were hard. Light was light when it was like, in, 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 in reality, yep, that's what they would look like because they're just skating around outside a abandoned area. Just, just and ruins. In real life, there wouldn't be dramatic lighting, but I don't want real life. I want yeah, this is a Oz. movie. And there was no, the set design was not there. It was, I felt as if someone was like. For Emerald, for Emerald City exterior, I agree. I just felt like so much was so, ter I was like, what, is this bright light? Like they, there's not a bounce to be seen they're just like well it's a it's a sunny day this will work and i'm like i could have had a video camera back then and just been like hey guys let's use you know this mask from you know halloween superstore or whatever and uh put wheels on your feet and it'll be fine and and i think that it was that 
feeling throughout the whole movie that I'm like, God, this, this is like, I don't I, like, did this even come to theaters? Yeah. Like I'm, this is yeah. the beest movie that has ever been. It does. There are parts of the movie that feel very television movie. But yeah. okay, that um, makes sense. There are other elements that I I think are uh, amazing, uh, just from a production design standpoint. Um, oh. <clears throat> now I I agree with you on uh, um, uh, Emerald City exterior. It looks like they just found a dilapidated place and filmed there without doing much set dressing or lighting or anything. It it's, might it's have been very real. Yeah, the, the, uh, I, for the most part, I, I liked a lot of Bav Morda. I'm sorry, not Bav Morda. Uh, uh, maybe what what is her name? The, the evil queen, the, head, the headless queen. Her palace, yeah. I I like the general vibe of. I I, I like the hall that the heads the hall are of in. heads is really cool. Her I wish she used cool. more heads. I, like I honestly wish that she changed it because they only have the one at the beginning and then the other one that just stays throughout. And I'm like, oh. Well, there's three main ones. So there, she because she. Oh, that's right. She the initial one, that. she changes it to the one, and then the Bav Morda head, Jane Joan Marsh, whatever her name is, is in with the the. That's right. Powder in the number thirty one. Something like that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> But that whole sequence where uh, where she's grabbing the key off of the headless body sleeping in a bed, and she has to creep down a hallway with a bunch of sleeping heads in their in their own little cupboards with windows on them, and is trying to steal a key from another head, just that's a great scene. I I, yeah. I think there are elements that could have been done better, but, sure, but there, it is there's a, a lot of imagination scene. there. Yeah. Um, I also love the um, effects regarding, it, especially TikTok, the uh, the 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 auto auto the, the automaton. Yes. Uh, I don't know how the hell they got that thing walking. I think they had a guy like doubled over inside. Oh my and, god! And, Do you so think I, so? I, I think looking at the way that thing is built, it looks like it. I think they had a guy in there who was just had his feet. You know, in the, feet. in the legs, but was also doubled over like this with his hands and was just, you know, doing oh, this that, to walk. That makes sense. Because the that fact would that they give got that, that goddamn thing to act, that just amazing womp, womp, womp. Yeah. Womp. I'm he, like, I don't see why. And he's with her. He's with, like, he's that, like, he. And he manages to go upstairs and stuff. It's, it's, just a wonderful effect it's really well done yeah he is uh, he is good he the, is the jack skellington or the, the jack pumpkin head uh when it's a puppet is actually really really well done although you know brian henson was doing it so it's not too surprising but it's a great puppet doesn't work as well when it's in some of the wider shots when it's an actor it's it's okay you can sure. always tell because the character has a very thin neck, and when it's a puppet, it's a it's a thin, you know, yeah. it's a head on a neck, and it's an actual person. You can tell, yeah. but it, it's yeah, the, but it's the it's animatronic good. moose head is great. <laughs> I love all of the uh, the 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 claymation for the rocks that appear, and and it's wonderful. It's a great idea because you can have um, you can just put a boulder somewhere in a scene and you don't even have to pay for the animation. It's like, I know they're watching, but yep. Um, yeah. the whole, uh, the wheeler falling into the sand trap is, is great. Um, the whole ending sequence at gnome King mountain is not the most interesting set, but the gnome King himself is so damn interesting that he is it, very, He's now he's someone point, that so. I recognize too, but he had a TV blue actor, face, yeah. so I was like, "Well, was he played like, the the doctor too, who was gonna electrocute yes. her." So, uh, well, and then the evil the queen evil queen was the the was nurse the nurse. with the sh spiky shoulder pads. Yeah, which I'm like, <clears throat> so let's let's rewind for just a split second because you mentioned at the beginning that um, Dorothy, which is how we know that is just her dealing with 
trauma. And which is what you I know, was. The, the doctor, the nurse, because TikTok the is obviously nurse. a reflection of the, uh, the the electroshock machine. You know, like, look, it has eyes and a nose and a mouth. But like, so the nurse, so this is the thing. So yeah, the, the, doctor, the pumpkin that uh, the, the other inmate gives her, the inmate ends up being the yeah. actual Queen of Oz. You know. Right. So the, um, right, who is the mother of the pumpkin mother which also freaked me out he's like i know you're not my mother but can i, I call, call you mother and she's like okay and i'm like you're 10 ah i don't want anyone you're... calling me mother i'm older than 10 she's and she, you, you know what a uh, little dorothy swings with it because it's it's like oh, oh my the, the he's like i my my action have wound down and i can't move she's like well that's that's them's the breaks tiktok they get they they fall out of, they're flying on a moose headed couch and it comes apart and she falls it's like oh no and she's like well what are you going to do <laughs> but um yeah so no the thing that i was thinking was funny is at the beginning of the movie when she's at the psychiatric clinic and they're in the um the nurse is there I'm like, what are you wearing, Madam Nurse? Like, you, I, I get that I it's the. I think they're trying to homage the Wicked Witch of the West's outfit in the I first think movie, so. but because I'm like, you, I get the the 1800s of it all, but like, I, I and you, she's not going to be wearing like scrubs <laughs> or anything, and she's still a woman of that time, so mm -hmm. she'd be wearing. But it just seemed very extravagant to be giving someone electric shock therapy. I was like, okay, that you're awkward. But anyhow, um, I also thought it was interesting uh, being an uh, being uh, not the word I'd use, but anyways, um, when she being Dorothy at the end is trying to find her friends, right? And oh, in the in the room, yeah, in the room of trinkets. So all her friends have been turned into yes. trinkets. And she king. has to right by the gnome king, and she has to figure out. She has three guesses to figure out which one of them is her, you know, are her friends, or she gets turned into a trinket herself. Right, and so they figure out that green is the operative thing. That if it is a green uh, knickknack, then that is an ozzy mandiasin and <laughs> um and she can uh touch it say oz and oh a friend will come back to life and it's very exciting except i think it's funny that every single time she sees a green thing she's very trepidatious she's like should i touch it and say oz should i touch it and say oz i don't and know I'm, it worked the last four times it should be fine and i'm like i think i think by this time yeah, i think we like, figured out the pattern i think yeah like <laughs> Especially when you, the first one, you're like, oh, okay, well, it is green. And then, yeah. Because who is it that is at the end that they, is it TikTok that doesn't come back? No. Who is it? Is it Jack? Who is it at the very end who doesn't come back? It's, and it's, on it's the antler? TikTok. Yeah. The, it, it was the TikTok. metal on the amp antler. Yeah. That's right. The metal on the antler. But um, I will say another thing that, <laughs> again, so when Dorothy is sucked out by the river because it's a big flood and she's sucked to Oz. She's, she enters the river with another inmate, the mm -hmm. woman who becomes um, the queen of Oz and the one that brought her the pumpkin and they leave together again, who knows? Um, but they, and the girl drowns and uh, when, well, when when Dorothy gets there to Oz, she doesn't look for her. She doesn't mention the fact that she was with her. Like, oh my gosh, where's my friend? It's not until the end when Oz, Ozzy, Oz, 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 girl, or something. Ozma. Thank you. I'm like, I know it's set. It's off. yeah. When Ozma comes back. She goes, I thought you drowned. And I'm like, oh, you did? Because you seem totally like, eh, I left with one friend. I ended up with zero well, that, chicken. You know, that that's, that's Then's how the dreams breaks go. When there's you know? a... that, that's how dreams go. So they, they, they don't really make a lot of sense. Okay, I guess that's fair. But I was like, um, dude, your Cold. friend <laughs> is totally gone. Um, well, like, I also won. Anyways, that's 
that's that's yeah that's another thing that stuck out is interesting to me about this film was the score uh it's not bad but it's it's very triumphant sounding it's it's very adventure fantasy almost indiana jonesy i mean you look at the the design of a lot of these characters you know and that kind of darker creepier tone that they seem to be going for and you think that the score is going to be more danny elfman than sure yeah the, you know than howard shore um, <laughs> you know um again the score is not bad it's just not what i would have expected uh for the tone that they seem to be going for for the most part you know emerald city exterior notwithstanding yeah yeah it's an inter- it's it'd be interesting to read I some of these, you know, I would like to read some of the there's uh, there's a dozen of it, you know, L. I think it's L. Frank Baum. It is. He wrote at least a dozen himself. And then there's after he was done that, you know, other authors took up the pen and there's there's probably 30 or what else did he write? I know that he wrote Oz. Uh, Did he write James and Giant Peach? Did he write? No, that, that that's. R- Raul Dahl. Oh, that that okay. Because I was gonna say, Different who's the guy. one that did Wonka? Char- Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, same guy. That's Dahl as well. Because yeah. those are also almost of the same ilk of like we've sort of. I mean, writ- written decades apart, but yeah, the, the, these were turn of the century, and uh, the Dahl's books were like seventies. I meant like in the fact that we have turned them into something very um infantize when they were kind of a little bit darker to begin with um i you know i've not read any of doll's works either so i can't compare them but uh you know james and the giant peach the henry Selleck, uh the, uh, the stop motion animated film from yes. 20 years ago uh had some darkness to it so i mean i mean think wonka is a freaking i hate it Oh um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a terrible. Yeah, both the yeah the the Gene Wilder one, sure. Oh, talk about. See, I wouldn't even like that one was so far off my list because I'm like I won't even put myself through that movie again. Mm. <laughs> like, but... So, uh, my final thoughts on this movie are: yes. it's not a good movie, no. but I you know, but I didn't dislike it. I, I was actually well entertained just by. Uh, the 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 animation and animatronic and puppetry effects i I was just sure. spellbound by all that because it's really well done all no, that tiktok is the fantastic craft the craft yeah. for those elements are really well done and i love that stuff so yeah. that helped carry me throughout the entire movie um although the, the movie kind of i i wasn't really bothered by the fact that it not a sequel to the 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 original movie it's not really a it's an adaptation of elements of the second and third books apparently which is a weird choice but but... and that's another thing is i'm like what were you because it also means like they had to have been pandering there's no reason they were definitely no reason to to do this ride the coattails of one of the most popular films of all time absolutely and And i think that's probably one of the one reason why the film didn't do so well is people were confused it's like why is she 10 yeah why is the tone completely different why 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 is that why is the spot where her house landed on the wicked witch of the east like somewhere a else minute, completely a 10 minute walk from emerald, emerald city when in the original movie it was like several days worth right uh, yeah, and it was also like a 10 minute walk from the deadly desert as well <laughs> yeah oz, <laughs> oz is a small place it's very very small there. well and she, when she goes that's it that's oz i'm like that wheat field right there that's oz <laughs> that's it that's yeah i see that when i look out my back um, door yo what did you think of the fact that uh, I, I i i'm of two minds about this actually okay. uh Last thing, the, the Belinda, the, the the chicken, chicken, uh, it's made clear throughout the entire movie that the bad guys are f- afraid of chickens for some reason that's never explained till the very end of the movie. They're like, she has a 
chicken with her. It's like, what? It's like, and they're like, get no that the chicken. chicken. It's like, why do we care about the goddamn chicken? Yeah. So we've established that the bad guys fear ch- the chickens for some reason. We've established that Belinda is not laying eggs. So at the very end of the movie where the, the gnome king is about to swallow Jack's pumpkin head whole, um, which is wonderfully creepy because his whole jaw distends. It's wonderful. Um, Belinda's hiding out inside of right. the hollow jack-o'-lantern that is Jack Pumpkinhead's head. And she gets scared and lays an egg and the egg falls right into the Gnome King's mouth. And he goes, oh shit, <laughs> you know, do you know what you've done? Don't you know that chicken eggs are poison to gnomes? It's like, oh no, I didn't know that. And he dies. And I, I kind of like that reveal because you you know something's going to happen because they make a big deal. They make a about big the chicken. deal. But I'm also of the mind where I'm like, did we miss the opportunity for some tension over the fact that we know that eggs are the only thing that can defeat the gnomes, but this uh, this this is a bear. This chicken animal, can't lay right? eggs. Yeah, like there, there there seems like there there would have been some opportunity for tension or suspense there, but because we don't know it's the eggs that's not there I, I, I i'm with know. you 100 percent because i remember because i felt that going in i'm like what is it because again i didn't have a recollection of that whole like the chicken being the you know savior type of thing um so them saying very specifically that she can't lay eggs and then she does I was like, it did. I didn't put it together until you said it, but like, I remember at the moment, I'm like, that seems weird. Like, why did she lay eggs? Doesn't she like never lay them? Like, why would she lay one now? So like, I feel, because she and I get that, but like, you're right. There could have been any sort of like moments leading up to it. That could, could have been a whole character thing where she could have been like a whole like only she has knew. the ability to fix these problems, but I just can't and because she of gets course, maybe mopey and depressed over who knows. Because she's hiding in the the head. So mm-hmm. they know there's something about her that is important to them, anyways. They know that the chicken is important and that they need to hide the chicken or something's going to be bad will happen so they already know the importance i agree with you you saying that like why couldn't we have known a little bit more of the importance like you know especially jack because jack was the one um i found him very interesting because he was like well she was wearing head 22 when she threw me up here but she's never been back so she must have been wearing another head and i thought to myself that's a bit there were very interesting things said offhandedly in this movie yeah because jack was thrown in this tower it's like not a hive mind consciousness like you would kind of assume yeah, like, i guess they just kind of have not. to talk to each other in the in the um in the boudoir but like that's an interesting that's an interesting concept of like she was wearing a head uh, she that never she, wears me <laughs> yeah like right or and 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 the, i also thought it was funny so her heads come from the villagers who you know she decapitated and turned the stone mm-hmm. i don't know what order that yeah, happened in. <laughs> not, well i mean she doesn't have a bunch of stone heads so <laughs> on the other hand that the headless uh dancers uh, were in the middle of mid, dancing mid dancing so i i would assume they got stoned and then decapitated and then we unstoned the heads i guess and, uh, yeah however she does it but it is it is well, she's got the powder of life so oh there you go she does have the power of life so she and much cleaner that way you can just get a stone saw i'm sure that they have something that would the gnome king just could bite it off and spit it out in her boudoir <laughs> it'll be fine <laughs> I guess. Yeah. But anyways, um, it didn't creep me out. I'm a little upset at myself for even having been creeped out. No, I, I, with the Wheelers, I I get it. I I think what's so creepy about the Wheelers to small children is the fact that they're clearly humans, but they're just unnatural. The arms and legs are way too long. They uh, hold themselves in a completely unnatural position. I think that unnatural it's the uncanny valley thing right where, where you get a sure. render of a human face that's you know that's too close to realism but not stylized enough that just 
makes it upsetting. I, I think that's why the wheelers were upsetting to us as kids because they're close enough to humans, but their their arms are too long and they and they wander around on all fours in this weird crouchy position. It's it's just weird. Yeah. I, I think that's probably what it was. I think like this is one of those movies that definitely needs like oh, it needs to be done different. It needs to be done differently. It needs to be done again. It needs to be done better. And I think like it's a it is I, you know a what? I, bigger I, story than they had the budget to tell. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Although although some of the things they managed with their budget I I are wonder are, are just amazing. Uh, but yeah, I, you know, I honestly wouldn't mind someone uh, modern day taking a crack at uh, the bomb books. I would agree. Go ahead. I would, I would agree. I think um, it could be good. I know we have enough cinematic universes, but you know, whatever. I've, I've got some free time. Yeah. Um, with all our the, the only, stuff. the only thing that kind of, the, the, the only drawback is all this would be CG and you wouldn't have the amazing puppetry and mechanics That's, and, yeah. and stop motion clay work. You would have uh, to really make sure you got the correct person who didn't just yeah, yeah, decide to draw it all. Yeah, you, you need a. I mean, use computers; it's fine. But it, this it needs some very um, a sure hand on the art direction. Yes, yes, I would agree. Well, maybe um, you know. All those famous directors listening will be like, you know what, guys, you're right. I can do this for you, and and please do. So, with that, we hope that it uh, <laughs> it, it continues. So, uh, yeah. So we're done being creeped out. October's yeah, over. Yeah, the, there were only two things that creeped us out as kids, That's and we it. covered both of yeah. them. So, yeah. we, co we covered them both. That's it. There's we were really cool and collected children. That's let right, me tell yeah. you. <laughs> We had so, our stuff together. No need for therapy for the eyes of kids. We were good. We're good. We're like, yeah, there's some interesting, there's some wheelers and some heads. Ah, I, yeah. that's fine. Yeah. Um, let's go watch Saw. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, movie mandates. So this month might have come to an end, but movie mandates will continue in November with the need for feed. So movies based on footage, brother. What did you choose? Okay, think back to 2007. Do you, do, do you remember a movie? Don't know if you saw it or not. I didn't. But do you remember a movie with uh, Catherine Zeta-Jones and Eric uh, Aaron Eckhart who uh, called No Reservations? It's about uh, yes. a woman who owns a restaurant. She's a chef. I remember the, the trailer uh some guys complaining about the steak isn't rare enough she comes out with a raw piece of meat and stabs in the table Look at that rare that's enough rare for enough it. for it that's Aaron right Eckert says, Never saw hey, your your towel's on fire and her you know her towel's on fire and like so i i remember this so we're not watching that okay uh, we're we're gonna watch the uh german movie that it was a remake of called oh. mostly martha that's awesome i need to write it down because i'm not gonna remember that yeah. Mostly Martha. Yeah. That's awesome. And I watched, I, I watched did you know that did you know that the No Reservations was based on a film? Like I actually did not. I had heard of mostly it's, it's a oh. it's a it's a foodie, you know, it's a rom com with food. And it's it's a it's one of the movies that you've may have heard of and when watching the trailer i was like i recognize those gags and it took and i had to do a little bit of research i'm like oh no reservations that Catherine zeta jones movie from 2007 that that's, that's a remake awesome. of this because both trailers you see a lot of the same so no reservations looks like a direct remake of uh what is it called <laughs> mostly, mostly Mar martha i almost said meeting martha mostly martha so i have a feeling they're they're oh, very excited. similar i mean oh, not, not quite gus von sant uh shot for shot remake but it's the same movie they're like oh this is a wonderful feel-good romantic comedy with attractive food in it but all the people are speaking german and we americans can't stand subtitles so just let's just make the whole movie again in english and you know, there you go that's awesome 
Well, I look, I'm really excited. I'm looking, I am looking forward to it. I would have looked forward to the other one as well, but now actually I think mostly, I like it when I get to see new things. Yes. All right. Well, if you'd like to watch Mostly Malfa 2, check out the description and see where it is currently streaming and or available to rent. I don't know why I said and or because if it's available for streaming, you shouldn't rent it. Rent it also. Yeah. One or the other. (laughs) Take the cheaper option. (laughs) Although you are paying for your streaming service. So, you know, it's not free exactly, but... So until then, uh, you can watch Movie Mandates on YouTube or listen to us in podcast form on iTunes. And hey, if you enjoy the show and you like us and you want us to reach a wider audience, that the engagement, that is what's key. So if you are on YouTube, like, comment, subscribe, ring bells. And if you're on iTunes, rate and review. And we appreciate it. Thank you. And with that, I'm Kelly. You can find me on Twitters at get Isengard. And you can find me at Andrew Eisen. And we really hope you enjoyed this episode of Movie Mandates, and we will be back with another mandated movie. Bye, everyone. Bye!